kick line today. Okay. Kick line, we'll get, I'll get in with you. There we go. Good All morning, right. Cincinnati. I'm Bob Herzog. And I'm Jen Dalton. And we thank you for joining us on this Friday edition. It's finally here, Friday, uh, of ARC Cincinnati. We got a great show in store for you. Art in Bloom is happening this weekend at the Cincinnati Art Museum. And just ahead, we're going to make our own flower art craft time. Craft time. You're a big crafter. I, I feel like this is going to go well for you. Maybe not so well for me, but we'll see what happens. And Cincinnati's own comedian, Rajiv Satyal, is back in town. And he will join us on the ARC set for the very first Yay. time to talk about a big show happening tonight. But first, let's see what's brewing in the Tri-State. Okay. He's so big. I got some orange on today. He's orange so and black big. for the Bengals. Although it's not guy. quite so the exact big. match, but yeah. this is the match that we needed. Meet the latest addition to the Cincinnati Bengals, Amarius Mims. So beefing up the O-line and protecting Joe Burrow, that was a decision many people saw coming. Mims looks like he's ready to step in and fill the void. He could fill many voids because yeah. of his largeness. He played for Georgia in college in his collegiate career while he was out there, didn't allow a single QB sack. He is 6'8", according to the Bengals, and weighs 340. Just a mountain Ooh. on the field. Rounds two and three of the draft continue tonight, at starting at seven. I think we got one pick in the second round, two in the Ooh. third, I think. All right. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to Cincinnati. Well, we wanted to know your thoughts. Local 12 viewers had a lot to share on the Local 12 they Facebook page. They often do. They often do after the first round of the draft. Yeah, Mark wrote, got to protect Joe, and this may just be a great choice to do that. A lot of people sort of leaning into that idea. Okay, I like this. And then Trevor wasn't as excited, writing horrible. This dude only has eight starts out of 30 games. Um, yeah, and he did get injured last season, so I know there was worry there too, but a lot of people talk about the ceiling, and Chris kind of gets into that. Chris doesn't agree with that last one. He just says, teachable. Okay. And, and that's okay. what a lot of people have sort of leaned into with this guy. I think uh, Zach Taylor. That's what Taylor, the scouts were saying when we heard we had some sound from the scouts earlier, and they were saying, yeah. all right, he may not have started as many games as people would like, but we see the potential. And, and that's that it. word, teachable, came and, and Coach said it's not so much that we see him as raw as just inexperienced, and he's going to get to work with Orlando Brown Jr. He's right. going to work with Trent Brown. He's going to work with some other big dudes like yeah. him to learn that position, both left and right tackle. So if it's, if it's another piece that can keep Joe healthy, mm -hmm. With the investment the team has made in that guy, you've got to make sure he yep. can be in there game in, game out. Okay. And drafting a mountain should help do that. <laughs> that should help. Yes. All right. We will see. We also want to talk about an update to the home of the Bengals, Paycor Stadium. So Hamilton County leaders shared these pictures to show the progress on a $39 million project underway at the stadium. And according to the Cincinnati Business Courier, these renovations are under budget and ahead of schedule. By no means. Are these updates flashy though? Some of the projects include things like, you know, replacing club seats, repairing concrete, waterproofing, and replacing the top level of the artificial turf. Things that are necessary though. County Administrator Jeff Aludo says, quote, we don't want to repeat what happened with Riverfront Stadium where we were demolishing that stadium 30 years after it was constructed. Now, again, we knew that some of these renovations were coming, but it was just a couple of days ago, we were talking about additional right. renovations that are sort of coming down the line and how much Alicia Reese in particular wants to see the NFL kick in to help with some of those things. But it sounds like some of these, not the sexy stuff, but the stuff that you have to, you right. have to maintain. You have to update. Yeah, to, 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 to keep, keep the stadium going. up. Uh, sounds like some of those things are happening. I'll tell you, when it's all up like that, saying, when, they, when they striked it I know. and got everybody in the stand, to go orange and black in the stripes. My seats are pretty spectacular. Right about there. You guys still you, you keeping them? Season yeah, tickets? Yeah, again? yeah, we got three now. Okay. Yeah, yes, that's cool. The whole all three of us can go. Sit. Think uh, now, your husband Ryan, he's a big dude. Yes, he's a big fella. Six five. So I can't imagine. Thank you. Six eight. Six eight three forty. Yeah. Think of that. That's a big that's fella. A big guy. That's okay. a big We're fella. We're gonna see. Okay. Well, there is a big shakeup with one of the biggest events of the summer. Yeah, the Cincinnati Music Festival is adding R&B group In Vogue to the lineup. Are you kidding I me? Know, Free your mind the and the rest will follow. Will follow. Uh, they're replacing SWV who had to pull out of the festival because of a scheduling conflict. This year's headliners include Maxwell, Neo, Fantasia, and New Edition. The Cincinnati Music Festival is July 25th through the 27th. Tickets are on sale now. They have a number of hits. Oh my giving goodness. him something he can feel. Yeah, I think uh, what a man is technically salt and pepper, but it was featuring in Vogue. So I count them as a okay, part I'll of that, that. A very yeah. important part of that song. Love, love the ladies. Yeah, That's going to be a great festival. Good lineup. And I'm out to know. 
You know, she said, I can't. <laughs> we're not allowed to sing. And I can't. Well, and that was, that. I don't think what that was was singing. So I think we're probably okay. That was good. I felt the passion, though. That's what that's I'm what trying matters. to exude, Jen. Passion. <laughs> that's going to be a Passion. good festival. Yes. Hey, so is this. You can take a bite out of some of the best Asian cuisine in the tri-state. Asian Food Fest is taking over the Court Street Plaza tomorrow and Sunday. This is the 13th year for this festival, but we are told this is the biggest year yet. More than 60 different food vendors will be featured this year. There's a little bit of everything on the menu. Some of our favorites we found include Korean fried chicken wings, Ooh. poke nachos, oh. and Japanese style cheesecake. Now we had some guests in studio in the nine o'clock hour of Good Morning Cincinnati yesterday, and what they cooked up, the aroma in the it studio the so rest good. of the morning was, was so good. Have you ever been down for that? I have not been down for I that haven't, festival. I haven't either. I, I, I went down, you know, they had that, that one portion of the Blink Festival last time that Asian Addy kind of yeah. had blocked off, and I spent some time there. But I have not been to the to the food festival before, and I need to get down I know, there. I need to get it, down there, too, because, oh, yeah. that's right up my alley. The sights, the sounds, the taste, the smells, all so of it good. seems spectacular. Sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest, you want to see more. So click some of those links, or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.